Hi, I've been working on my genealogy files and uh, discovered a big envelope of negatives from you know, about uh, 1900 to 1930. The problem is these are off-sized negatives. Some scanners will accept 35 millimeter negatives. They won't accept these, however. And what I want to do is, number one, I want to see what's on the picture. And number two, I want to preserve the image. So I've been kicking it around. I think I found a way to do that. Here among my computer clutter you'll see there's a big stack of negatives and uh, the way I want to get those in is first I have acquired a light table. A light table is something photographers have used for years. It's a translucent piece of plexiglass with a fluorescent light behind it. As I turn it on you can see there's quite a little bit of light. In fact I think you can see the outline of the fluorescent tube. The second thing I've done, and I'm going to turn that off, the second thing I've done is I've taken my camera and I've mounted it on a tripod. And I'm trying to keep it parallel so that this plane is parallel to this plane. Now I may not have it a hundred percent, but I have it pretty close. We'll power up my camera and we'll notice here, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it is in the standard mode and I want to switch that see the little flower that indicates that it's in portrait mode and I'm not sure if you can see that or not but that's in portrait mode so we'll be able to focus here about 12 to 16 inches from the camera to the uh, light table next thing I do is I take a negative and I place it on here and then I take my zoom and I don't know if we we're going to be able to see this or not but I'm going to zoom in to fill the entire frame. Now if I was doing this um, and not videotaping, what I would do is I would turn the house lights off so the only illumination we had is from the light table. But for this illustration I'll do it this way. I'll carefully hold down the shutter, wait for it to focus, and then push the button. And you know I think I'll do it two separate times just because I may have bump the camera and blur the image from the first time. If I'm going to all this trouble, what's the harm in taking two pictures instead of one? Once again it focuses, press the button, and I've taken a picture. After I've taken a few of those, I will open up the camera and remove the memory card. I'll take the card, pop it into my computer, down here, There we go. And then I'll power up Photoshop. Once I've powered up Photoshop, I'll open a new file. And let's see, just for this one we'll sort it. And let's sort that by date modified. Today is the 24th. So there's the image that we had. We'll click on Open. We wait a second. And here's our image. Now, the great thing is I can do a lot of manipulation in Photoshop, so I'll do a couple of things. The first thing I'll do is I'll go to Image, Adjust, Invert. And there we have it. Now the other thing I'll do just for fun is I will take the image and I will rotate the canvas 90 degrees counterclockwise and suddenly we see a photograph of my grandfather. And this is, uh, I'm going to guess, about 1919. It's my grandfather holding one of his three children. So I can also do another thing. You notice there's a little bluish tint to it. So we can go to Image, Adjust, Desaturate. That removes the blue tint. And, and of course, you can manipulate it as much as you want. You might say, show me auto levels to give it a little more snap, a little more contrast or you can manipulate the brightness and the contrast manually. But the point is, we now have a nice black and white photograph where all we had before was a negative. 